but anything that's on the agenda has to go when when that is that item is called so I don't see anyone jumping up to have public comment on something that's not on the agenda so we will go move on to review of the site plan and for PV squared photovoltaic array over parking at 71 North uh, 71 King Street Northampton map ID 32A-121 is there a present oh wait, wait but mark make a statement um, just a point of clarification I'm, I'm working with the owner on a, on a separate project and I don't feel it uh, prevents me from being uh, impartial on this particular project if anybody feels otherwise just raise your hand and I can recuse myself okay. see no objections okay so you have a presentation nope. hmm? oh you want to make comment no I was just Representing the project. Oh, okay, go ahead. Peter. All right, all right. Yep, so in Peter's stead, I'm Chris Grazman from PV Squared Solar. Um, been coordinating the project. Uh, the, the basics of it, it's 3,200 square foot solar parking canopy designed to offset the energy consumption on site. Um, it will tie into the building electrically will tie back to the um, insurance office. I'm sorry. So this will look like a carport? It is a carport. Is yeah. that, I mean, is that essentially the, yeah. the analogy to make? It will be the same. If you've seen the ones at UMass, the UMass project is the same yeah. Which exact. I oh, okay, I haven't seen that. I mean, that, uh, they have that one in the big, I haven't seen that one yet. I saw a picture, I think. Did you put a picture of that? Yep. Yeah, there's a yeah, picture. That reminds oh, me. Oh, okay. Yes. There's that park in there. The, the place that you're going to put it is fairly low. It, there's, right. a, there's a half parking lot that's a step up and the space next to it is a step up yet from that. Can you, can you tell me where the top of this is going to be in relationship to the two different levels that people are going to have to be looking at this from? Sure, yep, so it'll be the lowest point and highest point will be seven feet above that horizon from the back, from the, half, from the half thing yep. in the back. Seven feet, higher. seven feet higher. So if you're standing that. there, you can look through it, as it were. That's correct. Okay, and, and the highest point will be 11 feet, uh, 11 feet six inches from that. From so that. The low end will be. And if you were up next door in um, uh, Goggins back in Goggins there, lot. That's right, and you're looking at it from there. What's the relationship to the top of the? be similar to that except you'd look more towards the underside so from Goggins okay. that part in the drawing do you see through part would be yeah. facing Goggins and do you see through it under those circumstances yes okay and do you, and what will be the perspective from the bike path from the Yep, from the bike path will be that end view in that picture. So it will, you'll see that sort of flat the, V yeah. shape. Yeah. All, and you'll see it all the way through the King Street. Yes. Oh, well, not, no. not really. No. Oh, there's a building there. Oh, It'll right. set almost directly the behind, behind the building. Real, yeah, okay. behind the insurance office. Okay. <coughs> but there's probably an approach from, as you're going north, Traveling south on King we see it, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Not much. Not much. Yeah, it'd be pretty low impact visually. Uh, Goggins is to the north. Who's to the south of Peter's business? As far as. Uh, I'm just wondering because I know. I think it's the bank. The bank. Mm, it is the bank. <coughs> and then the church is next, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, not that it. It probably doesn't matter, but I know uh, <coughs> Coggins at one point was looking at developing the backside of the lot, and if the bank does anything in the backside of the lot, that will negate everything, you know, the the PV array. I think it would have. So the trees, did you see the trees to the south of it? Mm -hmm. It's still clear of those. So I think it would have to be pretty tall. Okay. I would guess above three stories to have an impact. 
if it was on the yeah. not on the Goggins side, the Goggins side would be right. have no impact. Right. To the north. Okay. But if there's south back lot development yeah. right. off the off the cup, I'd say it'd be about a three story height before it had an impact okay. on the production. Okay. Any other questions for the presenter? I, I think it's a nice nice plan and uh, hasn't happened yet in Northampton. We've talked about it before in different parking lots. Yep. Uh, and I think it's a nice. Seems like a good place to start. Good place yeah. to start. It's kind of out of the way. At the same time, it's right downtown, right. but you, do, you have to look for it to see it. Right, yeah, uh, it won't be very visible. Yeah. Any public comment about this particular project? Just want to make sure everyone's okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? I move that we uh, permit the request. Oh, sorry. Close public. Oh, close uh, public. Move to close public hearing. Second. And and Mark. I move we support site plan. Wait. Oops. All in favor? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, we third time's a charm. No, okay, third time. That's true. Site plan PV squared photovoltaic array over parking at 71 King Street, Northampton, map ID 32A 121. Second. All, second by Mark. All in favor? Four. Opposed? Okay, passes. Thank you. Uh, we have an item for 710, which is two minutes from now, and by regulation, we need to wait until 710. So if you're here for that, it'll be just a couple more minutes. Just to make sure. Uh, easy peasy. I don't think, are, are they? No, uh, no. Uh, oh, nope. I don't think so. I didn't, yeah, no, I don't uh, uh, nope. What I like about this is that I get into places I never would have found. Seven, one or one? Right. Ever, it, right. ever would have found no. if I had. Oh, I, oh, I see this one. I see this one. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> it's the same thing, isn't it? Uh, okay, I'm going to call I, the second item for 710, special permit for auto service, uh, David Rodina, 120 River Road in Leeds, map ID 5-28. Is there a presentation? Okay. So yeah, I'm David Rondina. I live uh, Upland Road, actually in Leeds, and uh, looking to, you know, re requesting this permit for auto repair on 120 River Road. Um, if you read the, uh, you know, it's a, a large industrial building, um, mostly uh, unused, and I'm looking to use a, a 3,000 square foot section that's uh, already segregated internally. Um, it's kind of just ready to go and been empty for. A so. Do you on the corner of Upland and Chestnut? Yes. Painting your house? Yes. <laughs> My wife and I walk our somewhat unruly dog by your house on a regular basis. So <laughs> we live on Haydenville Road. It's been a process, but we're Small getting town. close. Small town. <laughs> we're getting close. Uh, any questions? I assume that there's been concurrence with the. Uh, uh, attempt to sort of close in the. Oh, so in your, in your staff memo, I did recommend, so I noted that there are multiple curb cuts on this right. site. Right. And although there are no building changes or site changes, you know, this is an opportunity to address that. Um, the site is, I also noted the site is in 
the floodplain, so there's certainly, I wouldn't recommend any you know, hardscape or new um, changes that would then trigger a conservation commission permit. But I think there's been some discourse between the property owner and the applicant since um, I recommended in my staff memo that the northern end of that driveway be closed. And in fact, the, I recommended that, I mean, that's a significantly wide section right. of driveway access there. Um, it also is going into a curve, um, mm -hmm. so DPW felt like it would be appropriate to sort of narrow that one because of the site distance. But I think um, the applicant probably can explain sort of what's transpired since that time okay. about other uh, another potential change. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So I had uh, originally uh, proposed that I suppose with with the uh, property owners and. Um, and uh, originally they had agreed to it and I was gonna propose that tonight for that northernmost section. But they felt that uh, for, for various reasons, um, one, because of the semi, what they would call a semi-blind turn coming around River Road from the north um, right before that turn-in begins um, is a really close proximity and therefore any employees and or deliveries that might be coming in to that sweep, um, <clears throat> if there was somebody kind of tailing them closely, it would be much more dangerous if they had to stop or come to a very slow mm -hmm. with a, you know, near more than 90 degree turn around the, uh, there's a mm -hmm. telephone pole that if we had blocked off mm -hmm. that driveway. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's one of the issues, um, one of the major, more major issues, but they do, receive uh, tractor trailer deliveries infrequently, but frequently enough that that's really the, the most applicable place for the facility to receive these larger trucks and they, they sweep in as opposed to hitting the, again, going around the uh, telephone pole and maybe taking that down. Mm -hmm. So I had a conversation with them and uh, I have with me a, a proposal for removing, or I should say uh, seeding, grass seeding, uh, a 50 foot section basically in the center of, of the, uh, the visual property um, and, and taking that out of what is seen now as part of the gravel uh, curb cut entrance to their larger, uh, close to 150 foot section uh, driveway. And there's also a, a, a delivery door there that isn't really utilized and so. I can show you those if you. On the far side of that telephone pole. Is that uh, well, I think it's that? a little. I think it's more in the center of the building. But right. why don't you go ahead and distribute what yeah. you have there? I have uh, four copies. Is it the same one you sent electronically to me? Yes. Okay, so I don't need a paper That's copy. You can. Yes. So that driveway or curb cut, um, you know, most of their employees are parking to the to the left of that side, and you can see where the old site plan marked that most of that was gravel, and you can even see on the top right where I've colored light green um, says behind the green gravel because that's what it originally was, or at least previously, I should say. Um, that is, as you see visually with the green, that's now grass. Um, but what we're proposing is to continue that grass um, in a triangular shape, almost mimicking, you know, what, what we had originally talked about with that northern driveway, at least in terms of uh, square footage and taking off 50, 50 feet of space from uh, that driveway sweeps right out to the, within a couple of feet of the fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. And um, so grass that all the way to the left uh, to a total of 50 feet there. So that was what I was able to work with with the owners in terms of accommodating that request. And that's sort of at the opposite from where you're gonna be. It's, yeah, at the other end, almost end. Mm -hmm. It's a big building. Yeah, it is a big building. Mm -hmm. They haven't seen this, we discussed, um, they didn't have any, they had no concerns with the application um, in general. They did feel that um, there was a wide curb cut on the northerly end and they liked the idea of closing the northerly end, but they, um, they also felt like um, 
it was appropriate to sort of figure out a solution that worked for both, you know, the owner and the applicant, especially given the, the fact that they're not making any site changes or building changes and it's in the floodplain. So, um, you know, I think they did feel like there was a lot of excess curb cut there. So I, th I would think that, um, you know, I think they were understanding about that. Okay. Are there questions from the board? This is a special permit just because of the zone that it's in? Because it's general industrial yeah. zone, we don't allow by right um, auto repair. Um, and it's sort of a case by case basis to look at, it, um, you know, the location as well as whether there's a proliferation of these type of uses in a, you know, clustered and whether that would be detrimental to, it's really about preserving as much industrial space as possible for industrial uses. Um, and so that's why it's a special permit in the zoning. But there's a lot of already open space here. Yeah. Uh, right, so there's, this is, there's excess right. capacity in right. this building. Yeah, so we, on a, at a staff level, we think that it, it fits the zoning and it certainly, you know, we'd obviously rather have Something. Um, occupation of a building and full use, or fuller use of a building than have it um, be vacant. Yep. Okay, any other questions, comments from the board? Or would anyone like to make a motion? Anyone, oh, I'm sorry, anyone from the public, sorry. Hi. Um, I'm Elisa Klein, 18 Chestnut Avenue, so you pass by my house as well uh, in Leeds, and I'm here in my capacity as the Ward 7 City Councilor. Um, and I just wanted to speak broadly to this request for a special permit. Um, we have so few spaces in Leeds in particular, in Ward 7 generally, but definitely in, in, uh, in Leeds in particular, for this kind of entrepreneurial uh, venture. And so I just really wanted to encourage you to consider this um, and to uh, grant a special permit. And I also just wanted to make myself available if you have any questions in terms of the neighborhood, um, you know, traffic or any other kinds of issues that might come up. So I'm just here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else make a motion to close? I move we close the public hearing. Second. Dan, second. All in favor? Yeah. Anyone like to make a motion? I move we support the special per request for special permit for auto service David Rondina, 120 River Road, Leeds, MAP, ID 5-28, with, with, uh, with uh, adjustments to the um, curb cut and uh, grass. As, as, as submitted. As submitted, yep. All in favor? Okay, thank you very much. Now we will have a five minute intermission at <laughs> seven twenty five. <laughs> you work so hard so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You exhausting. never know. You just you never, never know. know. You don't you do it. You never, all never, time. never know. Oh, oh. Four hours. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I was you here. Just, I the I the ones you think that. are going to be fast take forever, and the ones that's you think are going to take forever are gone. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes. <laughs> Funny, funny. She has been okay so far. Yeah. Good. He likes his teacher. It's really great. Oh, yeah. Early. So. Jesus. 
especially for our freshmen. Oh. <laughs> you eat donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we're gonna have, just kind of a general, you know, like we all have to recuse ourselves because. Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> Sometimes it's like I have to like wait. It's like lined up. People, it's busy. It's really. Like, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. It is unbelievable. I guess I didn't notice it when it was in the Cumberland Farms because people like mm -hmm. pulled off the gas station it was, like it was out of the way. Mm -hmm. But it, I go by the, the one in Haydenville every day, twice. I mean, especially in the morning. But it, I mean, it is busy. It's, busy. Yes. it's like printing money. It's like printing money. I tell you. <laughs> and it is, I mean, they did a nice job. They didn't. They didn't do the you know, like, it's colors that people didn't want and stuff like that. So they did do a nice job. So does that mean like <coughs> it's good to talk to plants? She goes, no, we're gonna let's say to each other. <laughs> but she had a, she had an exam. Oh God, don't even give me um, I said, well, how's the thing? She says, oh, she's okay. She described apparently the professor described herself as an intense. Save the juice. Yeah, for sample games. Well. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, so. But so far, it's been. So she's, uh, I think she's, uh, she's taking physics, I think, for the last. No, she's a uh, conservation biology, or environmental biology. Yeah. So. Is she um, on the team, cross country? Yeah. No, yeah. She's been having some uh, fatigue and health issues this fall, actually. She's lying uh, about a little low. Some other, but her and but actually a couple other people. There's people on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, one's just like yeah. Yeah. one bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Well, well, well. So I said I they want to test. They lining up. She was very nervous. She whole neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. Come on, let's see if there's shit. You don't know. Iron wasn't. The threshold was like, but it was in the low third. I'm glad to see something being done in there. Though it's been sitting, just been sitting there for a long time. She'll go. She'll do the you know, demo mode. It's on Damon Road. It's just sitting. Yeah, part of demo mode. It's so something. When you come, Second. when you come from and straight in, or you could make a right turn. That's the road. That's the level. And then you've got to round to the other side, and it's Industrial Park there. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is. It's on the corner where the Industrial Park is. Is it that road? Uh-huh. Oh. So, so, okay. this is, the road this is okay. I want to call the, our 725 item. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, American Dream Realty Site Plan. More than one curb cut greater than 2,000 square feet of new construction, drive up window for Dunkin' Donuts, and a reduction in parking at 55 Damon Road, map, Northampton map ID 18D 26 and 65. Is there a presentation? Oh, I'm sorry, Mark needs to. Uh, we have, because of the work that I do, we have the past and are currently working with the council that represents the, uh, the applicant. If I don't think that um, prevents me from being impartial, if anyone thinks otherwise, please. Raise your hand and I can refuse myself. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so good evening. I'm Rob Levesque from our Levesque Associates, here this evening representing American Dream Realty. So also with us this evening is Rich Sipek, he's counsel for the applicant and proponent. Um, we're here this evening for a site plan approval for a proposed uh, site development that, that includes a number of items. If you're familiar with the subject property, 
The subject property currently ha houses a uh, former car, re uh, car, car sales building, retail uh, car, uh, car sales, as well as automotive repair. And what we're looking to do is utilize a portion of the existing building. And if it's okay with the board, I'm going to refer to this plan for now, just because I can actually mm -hmm. the the, uh, the dock will go on. The existing building is approximately right in here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to retain about 6,250 square feet of that building. This is this side here, okay? Uh, the rest of the building will be demolished, and we would propose a 2,500 square foot Dunkin' Donuts restaurant, okay? That would be located right here. The parking that exists in the front of the property will be retrofitted, but essentially will stay, stay as it is. The striping will be different, handicap accessibility, and a little bit of grading. In the back of the building, same thing will be, will be there's an existing curb cut here. We'll be utilizing some of that parking area. And we'll also be extending a parking area, kind of an overflow area, to accommodate the parking requirements and also to access a dumpster for this use here. The um, circulation for this building will, there'll be, um, there's, as mentioned, there's two curb cuts, one off Industrial Drive, one off of Damon Road. This curb cut would allow for right turn out and right turn in only. We would have an island in the middle to restrict traffic so that there would be no concerns for left turns in and left turns out. That was based on discussions, extensive discussions with the planning department, um, and we agreed that uh, we would be willing to restrict those movements on that curb cut. This curb cut is uh, your typical curb cut uh, in that it's, you know, it's unrestricted from industrial drive. So if somebody was coming, I guess, westbound on Damon Road, they would need to take a left at the light come down and enter the site this way. So they could not take a left turn into this curb cut here. We have parking for the Dunkin' Donuts located here. We have a little crosswalk to connect the two uh, facilities. And then we have the uh, drive-through lane. We'd like to have uh, a minimum of 10 to 12 stacking spaces to make these Dunkin' Donuts uh, function uh, very well. So we achieve that well before we get into the parking lot, which is nice. Um, we typically have about five to six spaces to the, from the uh, pickup window to the ordering kiosk. That allows for proper movement um, and you know, internal operation works best when, we're, when we have that separation. We also, the nice thing about this is there is a significant amount of stacking as people leave. And believe it or not, that ends up being a, a problem with some of these Dunkin' Donuts where they, when people leave, if they can't get out of the site, it can stack back into, into the lane. So that's, that's another thing that will be very helpful. And we'd expect that people that want to want to go um, east, uh, eastbound would take the right out here, or if they want to get out and take a left, you go to the light and take a left down Damon Road to the intersection. So where we stand procedurally is uh, we just actually, right before this meeting, had a, um, a, a meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals. We had a find, we needed to receive a finding, which there was a vote taken tonight. It was a unanimous vote of the Zoning Board of Appeals about 25 minutes ago. Um, we've also submitted all of our documents to the engineering department. We received a stormwater permit, approval of a stormwater permit, as well as a memo, I believe, to the planning board with no specific concerns. So I think we're in a pretty good, uh, shape uh, technically. Um, again, uh, what, I guess one, and one of the things I failed to discuss is a, a lot of the questions and concerns that we work through with the planning department related to uh, pedestrian, um, you know, where people are coming and going from. So we understand, we know that this light is being reworked. The intersection is being reworked by Mass DOT. It's my understanding that those drawings are at 75%. Um, those drawings include I, some lane widening, uh, a crosswalk, uh, a sidewalk on the north side of Damon. And what has been discussed is basically connecting to those improvements with our site. So we have pedestrian circulation around this existing building to remain, this portion of the existing building to remain, as well as on the Dunkin' Donuts. Everything will be handicap accessible. We'll meet 521 CMR, AAB, and, and ADA requirements. Um, we then are also proposing a, a sidewalk down Damon Road. Uh, just to clarify, we do not own this corner right here. That's actually owned by uh, either the city or uh, development of some, someone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we are showing a, a sidewalk, and that sidewalk has been requested to extend down Industrial Drive, uh, which we've, we've agreed to, uh, the extent of which maybe we should just discuss so at, at some point during the discussion so we can understand that and the proponent can understand that. Back to the, uh, the refuse areas, there's one for the Dunkin' Donuts and one for, um, for this building here. 
we had discussed this, and this is a change since the last drawing set that I had provided to Carolyn. I want to make that very clear. Um, I had kind of agreed to remove this dumpster, and then I talked to the project proponent, Mr. Sardinia, who runs a number of these facilities and was very concerned that he feels strongly that this would, if, if these folks, if potential tenants would, would be using this dumpster, that it would be problematic. You can imagine if you have an office use, you probably wouldn't want to share a, a, a dumpster with Dunkin' Donuts. While they, they have a lot of pickup, there is a lot of food, food waste and those types of things in, in those dumpsters where this may end up being an office use. It may be more paper products and the occasional lunch from your, one of your staff. So the idea was to uh, ideally to keep this dumpster location. So that's just to clarify since the last drawings that were submitted, that is a change. Uh, we were also initially uh, proposing three curb cuts. Uh, yeah. Two onto Industrial Drive, and, and uh, based on planning comments, we did in fact uh, uh, eliminate the third curb cut. The reason we had that initially was because we w figured it would be easier to get in and out of this parking area, and it would. But we understand the comment, and we understand the idea of the planning ideals for limiting curb cuts. The only other thing that I think it would be uh, important to discuss um, that you know, is the subtlety that wouldn't be picked up. Do I need to speak into this one? That would be helpful. But grab it. Sure. So the only other thing that I think it's important to discuss is the width of the curb cuts. And the, the, the width of the curb cut on Industrial Drive I don't think presented a problem. We had discussed that with the planning department in terms of the width. Um, the curb cut on Damon Road we have a specific concern with because we understand that there will be granite curb as part of the new work on Damon Road, the Mass DOT project. It's not going to happen immediately, but um, there will. the proposal is for granite, cur uh, granite curb, so vertical, vertical granite curb, which as you can imagine is very unforgiving. And I know that we want to restrict the movements and do that successfully. So the island in the middle is important, and the radii associated with that island in the middle, right here, is really, is really important. So what we did is uh, my office uh, took it upon ourselves to, to run a program. We have a program called AutoTurn. And that AutoTurn allows us to, uh, to it's a Transoft solution. So it's an AutoCAD add-on. And it allows us to um, basically take passenger vehicles or tractor tra trailer trucks or any type of vehicle and run them through the site. And it provides the outside of the vehicle. It provides the, 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 um, t the turning movements for the, the wheels themselves, tires themselves. And I do have those with me tonight. And, and my really, my, I guess to get to the point, my only concern is that the width of that as with granite curb presents a problem even for passenger vehicles. So we would like to increase the width a few feet. To a, a, and, and the reason we want to do that is because our interpretation of the, the zoning bylaw is that at the property line, we're required to have 24 foot maximum. And because of the proximity of the edge of pavement on Damon, on the south side of Damon, to the right of way presents an issue when you, you can really only get a 10 foot radius on either side. Normally, you could, if you were farther away from the, if the edge of pavement on Damon was farther away from the right of way, mm. we, would we would be able to achieve, if you can think of the geometry of it, we'd be able to achieve sweeping radii mm. if we were farther away. But because we're so close, mm. we have tighter radii on either side, mm. which doesn't allow for the width needed to get two vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, uh, on Riverdale Road in West Springfield a few years back, we had a 24 foot wide drive aisle and we ended up finding that um, two construction vehicles during construction could not get by each other and they were just F2, you know, 250s, 350 type of trucks. Mm -hmm. And as you saw them come in, they literally would almost hit. Uh, Mass DOT allowed us to put a Gord Island in the middle um, that allowed us to have traffic coming in and out. So there was an adjustment that was actually made. So it's not that we disagree with the idea of narrow curb cuts. It's just in this particular case, because of the proximity of the edge of pavement, we would request that we would be able to achieve a little bit wider um, to allow for passenger vehicles to get in and out. With what we're showing, we're still not allowing you know, tractor trailer trucks into this entrance, um, which we will have to provide signage for that. Um, we can also provide, instead of, uh, we'll anticipate we'll need to have granite curb there. Instead of having vertical granite, granite curb on our island and on our radii coming in, we'll do the, um, the angled granite curb, which will be a little bit more forgiving and won't pop too many tires, hopefully. So um, 
I know I got a little far afield with that, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions the planning board may have. Mr. Sipek is here, obviously, to answer any questions that you have as well. So currently, has that proposal on the curb cut been addressed with DPW or that this is new? No, this is new. Uh, actually, could you just describe, so you want to go to, you're asking that this plan, is this plan showing at like a 26 foot wide? Yeah, and I, if it's okay, okay I, I have uh, the auto turning with this just to show you. So there's a, I asked my uh, staff to put a legend at the bottom, of, um, bottom left hand corner. So it shows the front wheel, the rear wheel, in different colors. It shows the center, uh, the uh, the front and rear bumper, and then the center line. So these are this is and this is the curb cut. If you would be so kind as to pass these, these are actually the same. Actually, these are all the same. This shows the requested width. So if you'll notice, the requested width at the property line is 27.1 feet uh, linear feet wide. It's only because so just um, to clarify, so the board can approve um, through site plan a wider than 24 feet up to 30. Um, so I think just looking, so it would be um, uh, if my recommendation if you're looking at this it seems um, this strip actually can you detail the um, the divider strip to the constraint and uh, besides the slant based granite what's the middle of the material I mean that takes up uh, dimension two of that curb cut so um, I th think um, certainly it makes um, sense to have a little bit of wider opening based on the information, but if you could just describe how wide and what the material is for that center. Sure. The, the idea was that that would be a rate, have a six inch reveal to it. Um, and as discussed, I'd like to do angled granite mm -hmm. curve uh, and then a hardscape paver in the middle. So whether it be cobbles or, um, you know, a precast concrete paver. So something akin to like the, what they're doing with the rotary. Um, yes. So where it's a slanted, then a brick, so something. Exactly. Like okay. yeah. And what's the width of that? Uh, is that in the detail in your a this sheet? Is, this is to scale. It's 20 scale. And I, if you bear with me, I can grab my scale. I'm going to say it's two to three feet wide, but let me just confirm for you. So it's within. Okay, okay. I didn't know if it was. Yeah. There's no sidewalk going to be it's on the other side on yeah DOT's side. plan is for the sidewalk only to be on the north side of Damon Road I have it at two two feet wide um, and then it it, it flares the out at the end about, to about four feet wide what type of vehicle that might want to come in here for either purpose with it at let's say 26 feet would be required to go around and come in the anything other, other than side large, because they couldn't do it. Yeah, anything other than a large passenger vehicle. Uh, so, for example, if uh, uh, Smith College has a um, you know, a van, a large van, we wanted to make sure that those types of vehicles could get in. But if you're a landscape contractor and you have a trailer, you're, you're going to need to you're going to need to go around the corner. So we would we would sign it uh, passenger vehicles only. Uh, if you have a suburban, we want you to you know and you have you know you have your kids in the back. We don't want you you know hitting your curb hitting the curb and having a problem that's not a good experience for any of these folks at, at, at any restaurant so we want to make sure that they can get in and that's that's the concern so again the the, um, the mountable granite curve will help mm -hmm. yes. uh, it, it'll, it'll it'll prevent you know slash tires yes. <laughs> yeah could but it would be any passenger car any truck not necessarily trailer but any truck would have to go around the other way uh, so trucks, so like, a, like an F-350 pickup truck should, should be able to get through here. No, they're going to go. <laughs> they could probably go over the curves. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so the idea is that any box trucks, delivery trucks, those types of things, um, commercial vehicles uh, of, of any large size would, would need to go down, uh, take a left down industrial drive. Can you, uh, I know you mentioned that the DOT wants to put their sidewalk or the sidewalk on the north side. Can you talk a little bit about plan for your sidewalk and then its extension down um, industrial <coughs> drive. So the 
the, the sidewalk is proposed on the north side of Damon. There's a crosswalk that's a part of that proposal. While we don't control this property, I believe, is Carolyn, is it your understanding that Mass DOT will put this portion in? Yes, that's part of the DOT plan. Okay. That's city property. So there's, there was some discussion because the fact that Mass DOT is not recommending a sidewalk on the south side, mm -hmm. that we would extend our sidewalk beyond the, the, the property that, we, uh, the sub, beyond the subject property. Um, so we would include a sidewalk pretty much from this point here near the corner of the building mm -hmm. all the way down. And I forget the linear foot. I think Carolyn may have that number. Um, but it, it does extend it's down a good to, chunk. to the next property. Yeah. And then as far as on site, so we would direct people from this crosswalk mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the building. Mm -hmm. We have a crosswalk internal to the site to connect people to the Dunkin' Donuts. We did discuss with Carolyn the idea of connecting another one um, to Industrial Drive, but we found that there, it created more conflicts with, with us putting the dumpster back in. We have two uh, bioretention ba or uh, stormwater control basins here and here. Uh, we have the drive lane. It, we, and by the time you get through all that, we felt that you know connecting to this sidewalk and getting over there was going to be the best way. We do understand that there would be pedestrian traffic from Industrial Drive, but in the end, it just it was kind of a design problem for a couple different for a couple different reasons. Um, the, the building that's not being proposed right now. There's there's no current uh, proposed other use for that other building right now. We do not. Uh, they're exploring the potential tenants. They're communicating with potential tenants, but nothing specific at this point. Um, again, this would be retained portion of the building, about 6,200 square feet. So for that portion of the building, since that's this is an industrial zone, would that other building have to come back in front of us? Um, is this by no. default? This would be the site plan for the use for the whole site. Okay. Any uses that are allowed um, in the um, general industrial zone would be allowed in there, plus they showed the zoning board retail use, which is not allowed typically in industrial. Okay. So but the zoning board approved a certain square footage based on, this pre based on the plan submitted could be retail. Okay. So um, you know, you're approving that amount of office and retail and uh, with the layout and the, ori and the um, distribution of traffic and parking. However, just like with any other building in the industrial park, if someone else comes along and says, oh, I want to do this other thing that's allowed by zoning, they don't come before you right. um, to just change the use. Unless, for some reason, that use happens by itself to trigger site plan, then they would come back. So in theory, if another car dealership albeit a small one, wanted to go back into that little, what's now going to be a little building that would be allowed. Oh, that's not industrial. No, it's not allowed. Yeah, yeah it's not. Right. So it wouldn't. Well, at, but the site plan wouldn't cha couldn't change right. unless they came back to you. So, okay. um, and typically, yeah, so I'm not sure this layout would even work for an auto dealership. Yeah. But <laughs> um, this is first question. Second is uh, a question on the lighting. On the on the color temps, has that been discussed with the applicant? Um, I think we talked about that. Um. Yeah, so I believe there was a comment provided to Chris Carney from our office, and their photomet I think our uh, initial photometric plan had exceeded some of the criteria that you have with, uh, within the city, and that has been revised. A, a revised photometric plan has been done, and all the foot candles, my understanding, are under the the allowable. I think the other issue that Mark was asking was the the actual color temperature render so the, there was there was an option for um, I think three thousand three thousand yeah. five thousand yeah, hey but it wasn't clear which spec was being identified oh. and so the, typically the board um, has been approving nothing um, more than three, three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. nothing cooler than three thousand we wouldn't have a problem with that. I didn't mention the, I don't, was it this meeting? Or la, I can't remember if it was the ZBA or planning. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the hours of operation, but that's always a question. So I believe the hours, 5 to 11? 5, would, to, 11, five, to, 12. five to 12. Five, we'd like uh, 5 to 12. If that was a major problem, we would accept 5 to 11. But 5 to 12 would be the desired hours of operation. DCAF after 9, right? <laughs> 
So it's 27 feet, sort of the, the bare minimum. I mean, is it comfortable or, I mean, I'm just, we have, there's extra room. I'm not saying please take it. I just want to make, just given the traffic on Damon Road, does it need more to make it safer? And so. And my, I understand both sides of the argument, and I think uh, you try to limit curb cut width for pedestrian uh, connections and, and whatnot. I'm actually a little bit uncomfortable with even 27, but I think 27 will be a, will accommodate passenger vehicles. My concern is that the folks that are coming down Damon, if you're coming eastbound, you know you're not going to be taking a left turn, so that's really not a problem. You're coming westbound. You would hope that they you'd almost hope that they'd be taking industrial drive anyway so ideally there's not a lot of conflict with these movements but it's you know they what do they say design for knuckleheads and and then the, and then they create more a better knucklehead you know what i mean so so what we want to do is one i would be a little i'm a little concerned to be honest with you however i think it would be it, it will work um mass Mass DOT will be improving that roadway, and there will be an adjustment. In, in the in the end, if we did need to adjust, it can be adjusted. There is a failsafe; we could open it up if it was a major problem. So I think it's a I think where we're at is a compromise that I think we're generally comfortable with. But it again will only accommodate passenger vehicles. So if there's the occasional knucklehead, knucklehead the knucklehead will go hit the curb and maybe mess up his tire a little bit. Uh, you referenced the Riverdale Road oh, sir. that was 24, and you opened it up. What did you open it up to? Do you remember? Well, we ha we had what we did is we had in, in this particular case it probably wouldn't work the same way, but we had a gourd island and we had two 12 foot drive aisles, and then we had a gourd island in the middle. I want to say it ended up being six or so feet to allow for you know the vehicles getting past each other. But in this particular case, we're talking about a raised island in the middle. The gourd island that we had was flush, mm -hmm. so this is a raised island. So it's, it's, a, it's a different animal, and we want to rest restrict those movements. We don't want people taking lefts or coming in taking lefts. So I think what we have is a good solution, and um, you know we will we be we're certainly going to be communicating with DPW and engineering through the process, and there's permits that are going to be required to pull. So as we get closer, if there was ever any adjustment, we would certainly be willing to come back and request that before your board. But right now, just to clarify, a left turn westbound on Damon, a left turn is allowed? A passenger? Or do you have to go around? No. It's so not allowed. Okay. No. A left right. turn right. off of Damon into that curb cut is yeah. not allowed. So this... So there'll be signage to that effect or something? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. People are going to, you know, because of the light there and right. the backups there, I think the knucklehead factor is going to be significant. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. So. Terms of that. It just so you all know, the staff's big concern was creating a new, a, this is a new, it is an increase in chip generation from the auto dealership. So the issue is creating a new left um, point of conflict right in front of that intersection, a brand new signalized intersection. Yeah. So um, the constraint here isn't that significant. Um, and I would really um, sort of take the applicants. Um, you know, word that it, it works, and if it doesn't, they would come back to you, as opposed to allowing a wider point at this at this time. Because the wider you make it, the easier it is for More you to binding. create that right. new conflict point of left turn um, through that site. And the whole point of having that signalized intersection is to control the flow, and so that you can make that make the road work. Right. You need to make a Damon Road work. You need to make industrial drive work. But does really, I mean, let's say you threw another foot in, so you had six inches on both sides. Does that really change the person's approach coming in? If it's going to be signed, people, you know, anybody. Well, signs don't limit what people do. Right. The constraint limits what people do. So I think if you have an, um, maybe the, the person who um, decides that they have to turn left then will only do it once because they don't like the feeling of going over that that slant based yeah. curb. So, I, you know, I don't know, but I think this is a pretty mild constraint right here in terms of the angle that it's forcing the cars to go. And that's what would worry me is that if you made it wider, then there's almost no point to this. Um, and, and the idea is we want the bigger vehicles to use the signal and we want the bigger vehicles to come in 
on a um, you know in a safer location on Industrial Drive. This is similar in a way to it might have been the dealer car dealer that was here, uh, Leah, mm -hmm. whatever, that's around the corner on King Street, where it's right turn, you can only right. enter it, right. or exit, and then if, you, if you're coming, I guess, southbound on King Street, you have to go into the, the mall and go through the backside, so it's similar. Just out of curiosity, the, the curb cut on Industrial Drive, yes, sir. was uh, just, I mean, just, and I think I'm like, Dan, this particular location in Northampton is just <laughs> fraught with um, potential for disaster, it seems like, um, because of congestion. Was there ever any, any thought given to having it be farther away, like down, like almost like down towards where you put the dumpster, I mean, moving it to get it farther away from the intersection? I'm just thinking of people coming and I, I, I don't know, something about, I mean, you know, Hopefully, this is going to be a very busy site, and I, and I guess that's the. I'm just thinking about that part of it. With we might have had an uh, early layout, and I I think we probably didn't think of one dedicated there because I think initially we had three, so I think that's oh. probably why we didn't. So, um, yeah. That's uh, a good I, if if people get back up, yeah, they're in the uh, right, yeah. right. Well, so people are on. Industrial Drive, looking to come out and turn left, it's and they're queued up at the line. I can see other people trying to get into Dunkin' Donuts, and you can't because there's two trailer trucks coming back from Coca-Cola, and they're not giving way, and all of a sudden it's a mess. Yep. So, so there's, I guess, we're going back to the curb cut, and then I can talk about the queuing a little bit. But going back to the curb cut question, operationally, the you know, Mr. Sardinia operates 15 of these. He deals with the knucklehead factor every day. He deals with a lot of great people too, but I think he he ideally would like 30 feet if we if that's the maximum we can get. I personally feel more comfortable the wider it is, but whatever the planning board will give us, we will we will we'll do our best to make it work. Um, as far as the access, if we were, you know if we were to have a curb cut here and if you were to stack out, what we don't want to do is we don't want to provide a situation where we're stacking out. On the so my concern would be that we would be stacking, you know, if for some reason, and this is we're talking about an unbelievably successful restaurant, and, you know, we believe this is a busy area and will be successful, but uh, that would be, you know, probably almost at least a little bit more than double the typical stacking spaces required for Dunkin' Donuts to get it to stack out there. And what would allow us, you know, what we like here is this, you stack inside this lane, which is a biplex lane, it's completely dedicated. If you think of a lot of the Dunkin' Donuts you've been through through the years, they don't have a dedicated drive-through lane that's independent of the parking, and that causes major problems. If you've been Holyoke Street, I'm sorry, um, Northampton Street, Holyoke, that one stacks out onto the street, and it's been problematic. We're doing another Dunkin' Donuts in, in Holyoke right now, and there's concerns. So what, what this allows us to do is have a lane that doesn't have anybody trying to, you know, for example, if, if this was where our drive-through lane was and somebody's backing out, it causes, it causes a conflict and then people can't get in. And when it stacks, if it were to, you know, it causes problems. So what we like about this is you can stack all the way around the drive-through lane. Worst case scenario, there would be folks coming off of here, stacking here, and then here. So you're really getting total, you, pro you know, with all that, before you leave the site or you start stacking off the site, you're probably close to 45 cars, and, and I counted it all up, but you're certainly well over 30 vehicles that it could accommodate. Uh, can I ask a question, Nate? But anyway, what kind of patronizer are they having a tap? It's just serve the industrial park or people from driving them? So, so, Dunk, so I don't, I, I, I'm because Dunkin' see, Donuts corporate. The point is that it's so congested. Yeah. And if you, are, people are driving and uh, headed to work, or they decide to go have a coffee or whatever. So, if it's to serve that industrial park, Think, but if you it's ma the majority of, is to try to capture the pass by trips, so it's a ton of traffic. Yeah. 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 I mean, and there's a pride station down the road has a Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. and that's a that little intersection there is a nightmare. Right? Yeah, so we're this trying to capture capture those trips. Actually. Typically, at Dunkin' Donuts, 
uh, or Dunkin' Donuts corporate won't look at a, st a store within about three miles of another store, but because of the, the amount of traffic and the need, they feel that it's warranted in this location. And that, that pride is also on, that's going to be moving down. So that's leaving the pride so that station. Away. So this is in lieu of not immediate not, not, not necessarily immediately. There may be some overlap with those two stores, and if they find that they're they're still successful, they may stay open. I mean, the, the curb cut on Damon aside, I, I mean, I th getting in with that light right there with the industrial drive tractor trailers is really is definitely going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. There will be, I mean, once you're in, I think you're good. You've got you've yeah, dealt with the stacking, I think, yeah. really well. It's the stacking out on industrial drive that is going to be the, the issue. So if you had to, could you put the entrance down at like John was suggesting, I think, at the... Closer to the, the dumpster. dumpster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would change. Yeah, the short answer is yes, that could be done. Is this why you had two on, on that road, just to have an... No, actually, no, actually, we were, we had, our circulation pattern was just that we had one-way circulation here because of the width that, you know, we always try to narrow up the amount of impervious surface and whatnot. So we had circulation coming in and going out this way with angled parking like this. So we're kind of coming in and going out. Um, yeah, it, it, is it possible? It is possible, I believe. I haven't looked at it in detail, but. How many parking places would you take out if you did it that way? Well, what, so what it would do, so that I'm assuming you're talking about the drive through lane. Extending yeah. out, is that what you mean? No, 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 no I think uh, yeah. just yeah. just where some of those trees are. You don't change your step, your oh, so just to get, eliminate that, that. Eliminate that. Yeah. Yeah. move it down, move it down, move it down to the yeah. yeah. The issue people are saying if it, yeah. using that example, two trailer trucks leave Coca Cola, headed out industrial drive to take a right onto Damon, they're going to be queued up well past that your entrance. Yeah. So anybody coming onto industrial drive trying to turn left into that, they're going to start backing up. And that could present an issue with the amount of traffic that's always on Damon Road. Yeah. And so if you can pull that entrance down a bit toward the dumpster, that would potentially alleviate that issue. I, I think the internal circulation would suffer. Because what yeah. would, if, if I understand what you're talking about, I think you'd have a curb cut here. You'd end up S curving through the site. Yeah, you'd have to change, you'd have to change that. Exactly, but I think right. it'd be a very frustrating internal circulation pattern, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. We try to keep it as simple for folks as possible, you know, counterclockwise movements and, you know, so coming in this way and then coming back, you know, it would be a yeah, little bit different. You have to change the layout on the inside. Yeah. 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 Was, was this it's issue discussed at all with PPW or did, did they care? Um, they didn't seem to think that was an issue. I'm just pulling up a Google Earth picture showing um, there's actually a tractor trailer uh -huh. there. Um, I mean, you could get easily two of those and clear that driveway because they're pulling it up a little bit. Um, they didn't seem to have that a problem about the stacking. The other thing, I mean, this came up in the zoning board is that people were concerned that there's stacking in this area and I think there's an, there, it sounds like there may be an issue with signal timing <coughs> that, you know, may or may not need to be adjusted. I, I don't know, just, um, but I think those, um, I guess the short, the short answer is no. DPW didn't seem to feel like this was too close to the intersection. There is definitely a sequencing issue between that light and the light. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yes, there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not in sequence. Well, I, I think, and that should be changed when right. they do the whole right. reconstruction and they figure out, because they've got to they've got to time it from Bridge Street all the way up to Bridge Row right. or King Street. Yeah. So um, my guess is that they're not going to do a whole lot until they set it all into right. place. Other questions for the board, from the board, sorry. Anyone like to, um, any comments from the public? Uh, I'm on the butter, uh, Yankee Wood, on the south side there. My only concern is my past has been with uh, snow removal. You could state your name. Uh, Ed Dezenis. Thank you. Uh, it's been snow removal. They plow upon the property, because for the auto, uh, dealership they didn't have much room 
and they had to move their cars and they put all the snow on my property all the time. So that's my big concern, what's going to be on that side. Uh, is there going to be a fence, shrubs, whatever, something to keep them from plowing up there? Uh, I believe we're talking about the property line to the mm -hmm. southeast. Yes, that right. So the, um, there's a couple things going on. There's a, uh, an easement that comes through the property, an electric easement. So we're not proposing any plantings under that. But we do have around the dumpster location and in, 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 in between the drive, drive, drive through bat, uh, bypass lane, we have uh, a row of, of plantings. So that would be a hedgerow there. Um, and then we also have some plantings on the dumpster here and some, some plantings in between. So I think the good news is any, any plowing that would be towards the property line, if that is the concern, uh, would be stopped. You can't plow through the dumpster, so that will protect the adjacent property as well as the landscaping and the dumpster enclosure. There's plantings here. And then any plowing that would be done along the drive through lane would be parallel to the, well, at this point, parallel to the property line. So I think hopefully all of those concerns should be alleviated. We follow through with that. Yes. We, we, we will be required to. other people before, yeah. though. So, the, so. The, 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 we provide a detailed landscaping plan that has to be adhered to. Uh, there's a fence there as well, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. No, there isn't. No, will be. no but the, the, the drawings indicate it's not marked that, that, out. Very good. Yeah. But the. Uh, very good. Right. Yeah, there's a symbol is indicative of a fence, but it's not specifically yeah. marked out as a fence. Sometimes that silt fence on my plans, I wanted to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah, snow is going to be fence. removed. Yeah, so any major storm events w uh, with, with a site like this, uh, because of the stormwater basins and other areas that can't receive piles of snow, we would likely have to truck off. But, you know, m most events can be handled with normal plowing. Um, Carolyn, does that have to be a condition if the fence is indicated diagrammatically but not, not specifically pointed out to be a fence? Does it, do we have to say? Is there a detail of the fence? Did you include a detail of the fence? Yeah, let me just confirm that for you. It's, it's not a drawing C4. Yeah, it doesn't say that. And was that? Just a chain link fence, or what was that? No. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So we're gonna do a fence. Like a vinyl, change. like a <laughs> vinyl. He's got the all more than vinyl fence. Yeah. Okay. The white. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to clarify, to clarify, the, the the fence that I think you're looking at on the plan, I believe, is silt fence. Um, I think it's shown as a limited work silt fence because of what during for during construction. Um, but Mr. Sardinia is more than happy to put in a, a six-foot stockade yeah. uh, fence along that property line as well. Okay. We'll just do that. So if yeah. you think that's an appropriate thing to have, you could, I mean, there are a list of um, detail items that the GPW asked to have included on the plan. So you could include that, that a detail of the six-foot stockade fence um, be also included in the final plans. Well, it depends on what you, I mean, I think it depends on what you think the purpose of the fence is. If the fence is to just keep the snow from being plowed onto the site, I don't know that you need to go into that level of detail. It is, there are two industrial uses. They're not, I mean, they're two, it's in a commercial space, so I'm not sure um, you need to um, necessarily dictate that it's privacy X, Y, or Z, or it looks like, you know, one or the other. It, but. That's up to you. We well, think it's going to be a privacy fence, so right. it's, it's going to be a privacy fence. Willing and yeah. yeah, so we might as yeah. well. Yeah. But privacy fence of yeah. some right. sort. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, we don't really need a fence for the plowing part because there's no way for the plowing to go. Not anymore. Right. 
right, without the fence. So right. the fence really is mm -hmm. going to be about privacy. Right. I would ask, you know, to the abutter whether or not a fence is something that you would also uh, be good for you to have on your property. My experience is with the other car dealerships, like I said, uh, they, they plowed 25 feet onto the property and, and it was always a mess with the stones from their, they have a gravel apron from their blacktop and blacktop pieces and it made it tough to mow the lawn the next year. And um, I went through, there was like four of them there starting with Northampton Ford, Roger Jordan, he and all the others and, and uh, I had this issue with everybody and, and, and I couldn't resolve it talking with them. You know, so. Um, but they, I don't think they have, they have plantings. And no, there's nothing there. The so you wouldn't be opposed to a six foot vinyl fence? Oh, I would not be at all. Okay. Especially with the dumpster right there at the corner. With trash um, blowing. Yeah, and trash blowing. Uh, I got the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the front of my building, Department of Developmental Services uh, offices there. They've been there 24 years. So um, I don't want it, you know, having a dumpster there isn't the best for me, but I understand they got to put it somewhere. Yeah, you don't see that from your property. No, right. if, you, if you had the fence there, yeah. that would be even better. So, so it sounds like a privacy fence is, yeah, is, like is you know, going to make for good wood. neighbors. <laughs> so I've seen wood deteriorate pretty quick and okay. not get repaired, but vinyl might be better. So. All right. Okay. Other questions from the board of the presenter? Anyone want to move to close? Uh, so oh. the. Um, Sidewalk, is there any? There's no clarification needed on the sidewalk. Well, if you oh, I, oh, I was, I was thinking we need to. Do we need to do that as a condition? Um, I think the, you could make it um, a condition that you know it'd be done by the time the final certificate of occupancy is completed. Um, I had suggested, um, yeah, uh, uh, that as a condition, the yeah. length. It corresponds to the amount along the frontage along right. um, Dane it's in lieu of. plus in lieu of. Yeah, right. the sidewalk that's being built by DOT mm -hmm. on industrial. So I tabulated as about 450 mm -hmm. feet. And the color temp would be in that as right. well for yeah. the light. Right. And then there, there were comments from DPW about getting final plans. Um, you know, stamped by a PE showing detail of the base course for the concrete sidewalk, um, detail of uh, the raised, oh, that was the same issue, the sort of the, the um, detail showing the industrial drive access with a slant based granite curb and restriction and the detail of the uh, privacy fence um, and also a change to the um, C3 relative to the catch basin um, and um, that was a comment that already went to the applicant um, and then the other issue is just they noted in the presentation that about uh, making sure that the buyer retention areas aren't used for snow storage <laughs> and those are all from D to BW yeah. okay Okay. Move to close public comment. Second by Ann. All in favor? Just to clarify, I just came, so should I just not? Is there a reason? Uh, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't record okay. your vote because you didn't hear the entire hearing. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move to approve uh, American Jew. Hey, Mark, before you, some more discussion. Okay. Um, well, we can always do that after the motion, too, but go okay. ahead. Okay, I'm just, I want to go back to the, to the curb cut on Damon. And oh, on Damon. Yeah, and this, and this had a discussion about potentially giving them a little bit more room um, for no other reason that I think a few, you know, a half a foot on either side isn't going to make a difference either way with people coming in, but it will make a difference for everybody who's trying to turn in from their vehicle standpoint and from, you know, being, having to make a sharper turn and losing tires. And I just, I, 
I would at least like to have the discussion. I put, put that out. And we would like that. <laughs> we can get that. We would really we would. Um, and, and if I heard you correctly, Carolyn, the concern on the staff side kind of was if you create a visual that's inviting, you're inviting the poor behavior, the behavior you're not trying to get, whereas if you keep it so that even visually it looks like, well, I mean, maybe I shouldn't turn in there. Yeah. I mean, is that, I mean, is that it's what not, you're... Yeah, and it's not, it's not poor behavior, it's, it's dangerous right. behavior. Um, but I, I guess if you were to entertain that, I would say that this um, detail of the restriction needs to be flared further to prevent the left turn. So if you want, so if you're going to say 30 feet, then this needs to be really triangulated much more. Um, that would be better to do that. To right. Yeah. That would be Absolutely. Great. That would be great. Um, so I think if that's done, I you know I, th I I understand the concern, but I think that's really the only issue from um, the city's perspective is really to constrain that left yeah. turn movement across the traffic. Right. So, so what widths are we talking so about at that's, this yeah. point? So it, it it sounds like what Carolyn is saying is you know if you're if we're inclined as a board to increase the, right. the width of the curb cut, we should also simultaneously increase kind of the flare of the right. island. So not losing the visual, you're not supposed to turn here. Right. You actually increase the visual. Yeah. In some ways, in, perhaps and increase the physical it. Barrier. Right. And just yeah. you know make it clear. No, you should not turn here, even though we've widened the space for the people who are turning. Right. I mean, I think that's yeah. And I think, yeah, I think that. But what numbers are we talking about? Well, 30 is the maximum, I would suggest, um, because that's allowed in the zoning. So I think you're really sort of, I don't think you really have the jurisdiction to go beyond that. Yeah. So as a condition, would that, so a, a modified detail, would they have to be submitted and approved by us or DPW? Um, well, I would say. Um, could just be yeah. yeah could just be approved. I mean, that. you know, the other thing is you could say, designate like staff and the chair or something like that if you want to do it that way or um, staff is fine too. Okay, okay I'll give this a shot. We're good. Uh, move to approve the uh, American Dream Realty LLC site plan for more than one curb cut over 2,000 square feet of new construction. Drive up window, Dunkin' Donuts, reduction in parking at 55 Henry Road, and I can't come out by the 18 b 2665 with the following conditions uh, 3000 K color temps on the light fixtures, uh, off site sidewalk installation uh, shall be complete, completed prior to the certificate of occupancy, a six foot uh, privacy, if we want to say vinyl, I'll just leave it at privacy. Please. Privacy. Privacy fence, uh, as indicated on the drawings, uh, incorporating the comments from the DPW, and an increase in curb cut on Damon Road to 30 feet, with a f with a modified detail for a flared uh, island uh, at the intersection of of, of Damon Road, uh, pending staff approval. Wow, good just, job. Just, just the gentleman with the vinyl, he's fine with that. That's what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Do I have a second? And all in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Because you have the wrong agenda. <laughs> you send it to me. <laughs> Uh, we have one other item. Replacement plan for trees damaged the historic Round Hill site, the former park school, and the relocation of parking space. It's going to be a, a little building that's not currently yeah, going to be used. I think so. Um, so uh, I'll, I can just go ahead and start. So um, you guys are approved. Um, the Clark School redevelopment site on the, this is the west, um, north side, I think. Um, I think it's the west side. And there were, there's a whole tree protection plan. There were also a lot of trees that were coming down that under the tree replacement program had to be replaced. Um, during construction, there were, um, 
there have been some trees that have been damaged um, despite the efforts to create tree protection. So um, I have a plan here and the owner and um, representative are here also to talk about. Um, so there are basically three trees that, um, um, or two additional trees, I should say, um, that were intended to be saved. They're um, requesting removal. One of them actually was removed already. It's at the driveway entrance. It was a beech tree. It was not under, it was not a significant tree under our defined, under the ordinance as defined, um, but it was at that new driveway entrance coming up. It was an 18 inch beech. It got damaged during construction. Um, so that one's already gone. So, um, there, um, so um, that's one thing that I wanted to bring to you all as a change on the site. There's another tree at the back of the parking lot that they had proposed to um, keep. It was a 36 inch oak, and that's been compromised by construction. Um, so, there, what's um, before you, they have two copies of this. I'm just going to send it around. Um, put one on each side. So can share. Uh, I don't know if you have a digital form of this. I don't. Okay. I apologize. Um, so, um, and for another one of the trees, they wanted to create more protections yeah. so that um, doesn't happen to one of the other trees. So um, they're requesting to shift some parking spaces around um, in on the back side so that um, they can create more tree protection and then also, but not lose parking. So um, what's in front of you is um, a revised um, planting. So this is, there's a tree to remo be removed here. You can probably mm -hmm. see the circles. Is, um, there was root damage. Um, and then a bigger um, protected area for the tree over here. So, and then there's this tree at the, at the front entrance that um, you probably want to see another tree planted there um, because the 18 inch beech that's come down. And, um, and what about the yeah. replacement of? So um, there would be, they're required under the ordinance to replace that. So they have the, a new, they've had updated calculation of the total caliper or inches that have to be replaced. Mm -hmm. We still haven't seen a final plan, I think, for where um, those trees will go unless this has um, a tabulation on here. I don't um, believe so. It does. Uh, we have the tabulation separate. Right, I don't but it's believe not on the planting not, correct, plan, correct. right. So they had already been planning. Obviously, the planting plan shows trees that they were going to plant when the project was done. Those could, would count to offsetting the required replacement trees. Um, so um, what's needed from you all is to accept the redistribution of parking um, to save the one tree that has been um, damaged but probably can be saved, and then um, approve the removal of the other tree that's been damaged probably beyond saving. Mm -hmm. um, and the and the one at the entrance, the beech tree being replaced with new a new tree. We, I mean, do we need to uh, specify the, I mean, that replacement is part of this? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd want to say that you'd want another tree at the entrance there and that it should be, you know, X inches specify a larger caliper tree if you wanted to because that was a significant tree that left you know instead of a two inch maybe a three inch to be planted or something um, so I'm confused the one at the entrance that that came down if it was a significant tree it's not a significant tree in um, by definition because it's 18 inches DBH as opposed to 20 inch which is Threshold. However, a significant tree. Right. However, it was it was on the approved site plan as a tree to save for the right. at the entrance. So to have an entrance so tree. We don't have to make up that 18, 18 inches. inches. We can replace an 18 inch tree with a three inch caliper tree. You you can <laughs> no. You don't have to do that. You can basically decide how many trees or how big trees you want. 
you don't have to, but you don't have to rely on the ordinance to dictate how many trees. You could, you could just say, well, we were hoping that, that e we had approved that 18 inch tree being there, so use the same calculation, but you're not required to by ordinance. Right. But, if, but if we simply applied the ordi ordinance, there would be more trees right. equaling so 18 if, inches. If, for example, if we're owed six two inch caliper trees, and we say instead of six two inch, we'll take one four inch and two three inch or something like that. Yeah. We can come up with something because at that entrance, we'd want more than a two inch right. caliper yeah. tree. But you can't. But to get a five or six inch caliper tree is <laughs> is prohibitive. So what is the in terms of the planting, both the cost and the viability of planting? How many inches is reasonable? I don't. I don't want to specify the cost. I think that, and I don't. And I'm. It's, I'm really interested in not putting one in and then having it fail. So that's. Right. Well, I think there. You're right. The larger it is that you install, the um, harder the it is. Yeah, the riskier it is. Right. So, but I think three inches is pretty. So you know that's why. I I'm think asking. three to four inches is probably pretty easy, okay. to do. Yeah. Well, um, there's. Yeah. So. I mean, it might take longer to find one that size, but it's not impossible, and I think it can still survive. Goes in next spring. And they can look for it. regardless of that, we still have the other 15 or 16 inches to say, hey, we need to replace. Yeah, right. What would so the ordinance the say? What are we owed by the ordinance? So if it were 18 inches, you, you divide it by two, so that's nine inches worth of trees. So okay. if you're talking about three inch, that's three, three inches, three inch caliper. Um, if you did four inch, it's two and so, so that's the one in the front, but what about the one in the back? The one in the back, there's Hang there's on. a running tally. So here's the tally. So that's they that go. Oh, okay. There's, yeah. That one's part of the. Right. Okay. What is it, 18 inch? Is that? Diameter. Inch? Diameter of breast height. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big tree. Big big tree. tree. Yeah, it looks like so, a yeah, it's that, like chest height, right? That's where you mm -hmm. measure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I. Am I allowed to uh, sure. I'm sorry. Yes, if you'll come up and state your name and. Yeah. Thanks for hearing me out, Jim. My name's Jim Hebert. So I'm the owner of the property. Um, where that tree came down the beach on that driveway, there's not a lot of room to put a substantial tree there because we have a sidewalk going through there now, a handicapped sidewalk that wasn't there prior to the construction. Um, we truly tried to save that tree, and it was a beautiful tree. But we realized, and I think that no one really quite understood, there was a water main that went directly under the tree. And the way that the city had it mapped, we thought that it was further, like under the driveway area. So we actually rerouted the water main, but the existing water main we left under the tree. And I'm not sure how deep that is, but it's, it was directly under the tree. So we, we tried to not remove that water main and rerouted the water main to try to save the tree, but it was still compromised. So. There's tons of trees on the property, and our, yeah. our fear has been that we're substantially overplanted up there. I think we talked about that at the last planning board meeting. I'm all for putting trees where there's room, but I think having a substantial tree where this tree was is just probably, you know, we're, we're getting into a situation where we're probably going to have a short life of that tree. So I'm happy to have the, the ordinance imposed on us. I mean, I, I understand. I mean, I'm, I like trees as much as all you folks do, but I think it's silly to put them where they're not going to survive. Right. So, and this is right near the driveway. So you're going to have, you're going to have salt damage yeah. there. And, yeah. you know, I'd prefer to put them somewhere else. Well, I guess, so we could still, you, you know, I mean, we could essentially apply the ordinance and then, I mean, we've run into this before where if there's just not room to put the trees, we can, they go somewhere else. Right, in the city. I mean, I, I think for the board, I mean, our cons uh, we've always had the concern, well, let's not have a net loss of trees, right. even if it doesn't work right there, then let's put them, you know, let's make sure they get put somewhere else. But I think the, because that was the a tree, a significant tree, right. almost yeah. at the entrance, it right. had more import. Right. And so I think going from an 18 to a three or four in roughly the same spot, doesn't have to be exactly the same spot, I think there's certainly enough room to put a tree of that size, three right. four inch in that general area so it kind of defines the entrance and then get a couple two more inch two inch trails yeah. sprinkled somewhere wherever it fits okay. can we have do you mind if we have a little flexibility as far as because I, I guess what i don't want to do is 
um, we've run into a lot of asbestos, asbestos on the property as well. And I don't, I'm sure the water line's not, I, I don't know, some of those water lines, <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna hit. And that's a, I know when you talk about a three or four inch tree, I just don't wanna have to be obligated to put it right there because then if we if we do hit that water line and we find something that's hazardous, I mean, we're into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if you say you can't put it in there, we don't want it to go in there because we want the tree yeah. to live. So, you know, identify a place that gives it that standing but isn't standing right there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know how the board feels. I mean, we could say we want to see three three inch trees placed the 18 inch trees, one of which must be placed somewhere in that area in you know right. in that right. entrance area and the other right. can be placed somewhere else yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean yeah because we don't want you to put one in that fails either i mean that doesn't right. accomplish anything right. but, so yeah so and you know the site better than we do so but, yeah yeah it's just that every time we we stick a shovel in the ground <laughs> yeah. yeah right i think you can be at the entrance but five feet away yeah, so yeah. And yeah. still be at the entrance reason. right and in mm -hmm. 20 years it'll be a significant right. tree <laughs> Years will go through the water line and then you'll replace it. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, other questions from the board? Anyone? So, do we need a motion or is this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just want some clarification. So, just if you um, uh, vote to um, replace the beach with, if you just were. Um, reiterate what three, you want to do. Three inch trees, that. one of which has to be at somewhere near the entrance. Appropriately placed at the entrance. Right. And then you'll just um, accept the revised uh, parking layout and then um, the tabulation. They'll, they still, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we need to vote on that or is it just? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. So moved. Motion by Dan, second by Mark. All in favor? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Motion adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second by Ann. All in favor? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm with you guys. <laughs>